Hey, this is the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison. And that's the reason I'm starting on this hill with the nose pointing pretty much sky high. Now the ZR2 is already good. And then the Bison ups the ante a little bit. Rock sliders, that's good. How does it do that? Well, the name of the game on the ZR2 Bison is protection. That's what AEV brings to the plate, so to speak. The ZR2 mechanical bits are left the same because they're already good. At all four corners, you have the Multimatic Spool Valve Damper Suspension System, which is wonderful off-road. But AEV has taken the underside and just added boron steel skid plate protection almost all the way back. Everything underneath this truck, nearly everything, is protected by puncture resistant boron steel metal bits. The cabin is the same, the engine options are the same. There's an optional snorkel now if you want to get real fancy with it. And then AEV also dressed up the look of the front and rear bumpers. The rear bumper now comes with integrated recovery points and the front bumper has a bit more steel in it and there's a spot for a winch to add down the road. Let's go back to two wheel drive. So what we're left with is a still extremely capable truck that's now tougher. The underside is protected better, and that's a really good thing. And AEV knows what they're doing. They've been cranking out off-road beasts for decades. Now, all of this doesn't come cheap. What I'm driving here is a $49,000 Colorado ZR2. Oh man, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of dough. That is a lot of dough for a truck where the interior is not necessarily a $50,000 truck. It's fine, it works nice enough, the screen is easy to read, CarPlay up there as well. This is a full quad cab too, so there's room for my car seat back there. The front seats are comfortable enough, they're nothing to write home about. On the outside, the looks are great. I really like the way the ZR2 looks. I like that AEV swapped out the dick wheels for a better design of their own. Yes, ZR2 owners, you know what I'm talking about, you're going, yeah, my wheels look like a bunch of a ring of dicks. That's that's. What's going on there? Now this one is the gas V6. This is not the diesel. The diesel is good off-road, but the V6 is better for pretty much every other driving experience. On daily use, I would want the V6. Out on a tight trail, I would want the torque of the diesel. This one does fine though as it sits. The weak spot in the powertrain is the eight speed. This truck has reminded me how much I hate that gearbox. And it's, it's no different here. I still hate that gearbox. It just does some like weird, harsh shifts for no reason. It just, it's, it's, the logic behind it is poor. Someone out there needs to retune this gearbox and I'm sure then it would be fine. But as it sits, it's hot garbage. I really, really dislike it, like a lot. Like I have a passionately strong dislike for this shitty transmission. Engine good, running gear great, gearbox sucks. The other thing I don't like for $50,000, you have a regular key and then also a key fob to lock and unlock the doors. So what you get when you're off-road is a key that just rattles around. For $50,000, let me put a fob in my pocket and push button start. I don't think that's too much to ask here. So you don't have this slapping about. That's super annoying. But in terms of its drivability, we've covered it, the ZR2. But in terms of its just drivability, its off-road prowess, we've covered the ZR2 prior and it's still great. It's still awesome. It's just tougher and safer underneath. So kudos for that. I like the AEV badge on the rear. I like the little bit of AEV badging here on the headrest. It's not over the top. They changed the grill a little bit too that says Chevrolet across it, but not in a two in your face way, in a properly, ah, look at me, I'm off-road, I'm tough way, but without going insane about it. So I love the stance of this truck. It looks great in this red and black 
color combo on the outside. It's a good truck. I just I just don't think I could spend $49,000 on one. It's, it's like the same dilemma when you get into the TRD Pro and the Toyota stuff, when you might just be better off getting uh, a TRD off-road and then swapping on the stuff you want. The only difference here is that, you know, you want the ZR2 because that Multimatic suspension is incredible. I guess when Chevy launched this truck, they told the associated, they told the assembled automotive journalists that all of the protection you'd want and would add would cost a lot more to do it on your own. It wouldn't be as good. And then it wouldn't also wouldn't be under warranty or something to that effect. So there's a little bit of that that factors into it. There's a lot of it that factors into it, to be honest. Um, so do you want this strong, tough truck strong independent pickup truck you want this strong tough truck that still carries a warranty still lets you beat on it still let you have fun i mean i guess you got to pay to play all these off-road toys are expensive i put some highway miles on it it's fine minus that gearbox that gearbox was giving me plenty of shit then too while i was cruising out on the highway that's not what this truck is about though it does reveal the flaws in that gearbox but here on the dirt with some mud and some water and all that good stuff the trucks fantastic and I don't have to worry about stuff slapping about the underside of this truck the sliders are subtle I think those are stock ZR2 though that's not an AEV truck option those just come with the ZR2 um, you've got decent approach and departure angles you're good to go right out of the gate you are good to go in the AEV bison you're very good to go you can you can drive around and, and if you hear stuff hitting the underside of this, you just breathe a little easier than if it was a stock truck because you're protected. Your $50,000 investment is good to go. You know, I've been thinking about this one a little bit. I had to revisit this truck because I don't feel I gave it an entirely fair shake on the price thing. $50,000 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. However, you can't look at this as just a regular truck. You have to treat it the same way you treat something like a sports car. We're willing to give certain sports cars passes because they're able to do amazing things and then we see the extra value in them. This truck is like an off-road sports car, so to speak. It can do amazing things on the dirt. It's also really comfortable on the road. That multi-matic spool valve damper suspension is pretty amazing. It's really, really slick. When you have a truck like, say, a Raptor or a TRD Pro, you get a lot of nose dive and body movement side to side. Now, some of that is still here, but it's nowhere near what those trucks offer up. It's because of that suspension setup is really good and comfortable on road and then really great off road. So you have to look at what this truck can do. It's about a dual natured beast that is fine in a daily driver sort of way, and then just shines when you, when you put a wheel off the pavement. So I wanted to come back and say, I can see why they charge as much as they do. That suspension setup is very good. The, you know, you got front and rear lockers, you've got an engine that can get you in and out of places that you need to go. You've got a really good looking vehicle that's well built and focused on the task at hand. And it is a broad task too. So that's nice. I get that a little bit. I still don't think the interior is necessarily up to snuff for a $50,000 vehicle, but I think you can start to look some items while you're focusing on other items, which is what we do with sports cars. We'll look at where those sports cars shine and we'll overlook their shortcomings and then we'll go, yeah, I can see why it's worth that much. Where a person standing on the side who doesn't care as much about sports cars would go, you guys are crazy. I don't get it at all. So put your mind in that mindset for this truck and its job of having fun off road. And then maybe the price starts to make more sense. I also do want to mention another thing I forgot. The brakes feel a little bit overworked. And I can't remember if they were that way in the first ZR2 as well, the non-bison, the one I drove. But I know when you're hauling it down from speed, they work, they just feel like they're a little overworked. And that's probably because there's a lot of rotating mass at each corner and all of that good stuff that applies to a better off-road driving experience. So I don't know. So the takeaway here, 
Is it a good truck? Yeah, it's a great truck, actually. I really like this thing. Looks great, drives well, does all of that awesome stuff. The two negatives for me, that eight-speed gearbox, hate it. The brakes feel a little bit overworked. And then it's up to you to decide if the price makes sense. Unlike the Ford Edge ST, I wouldn't mock you if you bought one of these. That's a good way to leave this one. Hiya! I don't want to start like that.